All of the temple's servants are punished if they fail to do their duties in a proper manner. We treat them all equally. Fairly. And just because Mary is our relative, she should not be an exception, am I right? I'm sure the punishment wasn't out of animosity. We all love Mary very much. Yes. But children must learn to understand the meaning of pain and hardship from a young age. Stop being so irrational, Zachariah. You're saying that we should punish them harshly? These children are insolent. If they are not punished for their mischief when they misbehave, they'll turn the temple upside down. That is why their hearts must be filled with fear. They're all afraid of me, and I do my best to reinforce this fear. Tell me, Zachariah, do you... remember when I was your student? Yes, and I never harmed you, Jeroboam. No, you didn't. You didn't, but all the other teachers did. The other teachers beat us barbarically with whips. They kept the fire of pain and suffering burning in us. Agony. Anger. And resentment. These things build character and tolerance in a person. Just what are you trying to say, Jeroboam? Hatred and vengeance are not virtues for believers. Vengeance hurts the heart and brings God's curse along with it. And anger steals joy and happiness from a person. Life is filled with suffering, Zachariah. When Herod took the emperor's army here and attacked Jerusalem, and when he had his soldiers ruthlessly massacre every rabbi in sight, at one point, I got stuck under a half-burnt piece of timber. The Roman soldiers were standing above me. My legs started to burn. But I did not cry out. Nor did I even move. I just lay there, playing dead. And when they were satisfied that I was, they left me alone. Tolerating pain was what saved my life that day. Through pain is how we achieve perfection. All of the temple's servants and scholars should be exposed to this pain, this most sublime pleasure, in order to build character. I think that old wound has infected your soul and made you wrongfully hateful towards God's servants, Jeroboam. Look in your heart. Please, Hillel, I ask you to exempt Mary from working in the temple any longer. Hello, Joseph. What happened? Nothing. Then why are you crying? Can't you do something, Grandfather? They taunt Mary all the time. When you're not here to see it... She's lonely, very lonely. She's a divine miracle. A flower that has blossomed amid the Jews. But no one appreciates her. I'm going to teach that mean old Jeroboam a lesson that I'll never, Come. ever forget. Come. I'm going Calm to... Calm down, Joseph. Where is Mary now? Over there. Hello, Mary. Hello. Mary, I've just finished speaking with Hillel. From now on, you can spend your time here only to worship. No more working. 
But if I don't do the work, who will? There are enough servants at the temple for that. I see, thank you. Now go get some rest. So no one will ever hurt her anymore, right? Yes, I hope so. Mary's been working too hard. She told me she didn't mind it. She just felt distressed because she had to come and go among the men. She had asked God to prepare her for spending her time only worshipping. And now her prayers have been answered. She's exempt. She's been excused from work. They say she's not allowed to teach us anymore. It's better she just stay in our hut. No one believed when the rabbis kept insisting that girls don't belong in the temple. Yes. And now look at the trouble that's been caused. It's just devastating. Don't you see? They should have excused her from working in the first place. They're always saying that we shouldn't interfere with everything. But do you think men could do the work that we do day in and day out? How can we expect such a thing from them? A man couldn't even survive a day without a woman. <laughs> God answer all your prayers. May God bless your kindness and generosity. who are Pharisees are in charge of managing the temple, but you do seem to be kinder to the Sadducees. Well, take care. Goodbye. Hello, Hello Grandfather. Mary. Why are you sitting here alone, dear? How are you feeling today? Does your hand still hurt? It's much better. Forgive me. I blame myself for leaving you alone so often, but I don't have a choice. It's a long way to travel from Galilee. Grandfather? Yes? I'm only a child. I don't understand why adults argue so much and don't get along with one another. I have nothing to do with them. So why do they treat me so badly? Why do some people treat others badly? I don't understand. How is it people can just not like each other? God knows that I, like Jeroboam, I do. And so... I feel so upset. I must have done something wrong to make him angry. You are exactly as you should be. Pure and innocent. Your father, Imran also suffered greatly despite his wonderful love for these people. But why? Because he was God's prophet. But these people are also awaiting God's messenger, the Messiah, right? I'm afraid he too will be troubled by them. What will he want from them? Nothing. They will hear from Christ Moses' great religious laws. You see, Mary, 
The religion which currently exists among the people is not entirely based on Moses' teachings. Over the years, the wealthy and powerful Israelites made changes to Moses' teachings in accordance to their own liking. So Christ will also go through a lot of suffering. Hmm. Have you come here? Why are you crying? I miss my mother. I'll go and get more water. seem to stop myself from thinking about her. Wherever I look, her face seems to flicker before my eyes. I don't have a child, but I swear I understand what you're going through. You'll waste away if you keep this up. I suggest you go and see her in the temple today. I shouldn't go there too often, Elizabeth. If she sees me, it might make it harder for her to stay there in the temple. Don't worry. Mary will be strong. I know she will. I've made a promise. Yes, but not to be distant from her. You promised to send Mary to the temple, which you've done. Hannah, your love for Mary is a holy love. Go and see her. Go. Go and see your precious daughter. Go and embrace her again. Israelites, repent. Wash your hands so that you're free of sin and cleanse your hearts before the Christ arrives. Purify yourselves before your hearts are revealed to him so that you may not suffer a great humiliation. Why are you so greedy for worldly things and ignorant of the hereafter? Awaken and open your eyes. Look into your hearts now, for Christ will not intercede when you stand before God in judgment. 
What is she saying? It will not be long before he comes and punishes you for your crimes. Punishes you for stealing money from orphans. You make a living by overcharging people for your goods. And then you try to justify this oppression. This horrible oppression that causes such harm. You call yourselves Pharisees and say that you devote yourselves to God. But you devote yourselves in no meaningful way. That's the woman who staged the temple sit in. Yes, world. that's her. Your tongues deceive the innocent. She's a mischievous woman and relentless you too. She hasn't let the people have any peace ever since the day she arrived. You wear the clothes of rabbis and speak of righteousness with lofty flattery and empty words. You fail. You fail to take the step towards the truth, Pharisees. Be aware, for his wrath will be visited upon you. Because his rule will Michael? be based on justice and on piety. It must be so. The true believers have a problem with the Pharisees. You think so? Just wait till she warms up. She'll address the Sadducees as well. You'll see. Why are you standing around here for? Get onto your classes. Listen, woman. Perhaps you'd better tie a tighter knot in your robe. Maybe God will have a cure for you then. <laughs> Don't worry. My cure will come soon enough. up on her. Where is she? Where's my Mary? How is she? Mary, I want to see her now. Wait a moment. She'll be here very soon. I can bear it no more. It's been long since I've been able to eat or sleep. Illness has sapped my strength from me. Your separation from Mary is damaging your health, Hannah. <sighs> what have you been through? I can't imagine. Why are you tormenting yourself this way? Just wait. <laughs> She'll come soon. <sighs> there she is. Mary, here! Mary! Mary! <gasps> Why have you called her here? She mustn't see me. She mustn't. Why? I'm... I'm afraid that if she sees me... She'll find it difficult to stay here. Hello, Mary. 
How are you today? I'm just fine. How do you find it here, Mary? Are you happy here? Yes, I'm happy here. Tell me, have you heard from my mother? She's well. Your mother is just fine. I'm worried about her. I don't know what she's doing. Doesn't she know how much I love her? I don't have anyone else in this world but her. And I don't see Zachariah that often here. So whenever I think of my dear mother, I just feel even more lonely. to go. Good day then. You're not holding up well. Your whole body is shivering. Let me go call a doctor for you. I just saw my doctor. <laughs> but I couldn't even touch her. wish for anything more. Nothing else in this world. Now that I've seen her and heard her voice. <laughs> Goodbye, Anna. Oh, Mary. What happened? It's Mary's mother. Why? Is she all right? It's hard for a mother to be separated from her child. She was a good mother. God wanted it this way. Be patient, Elizabeth. Hannah fulfilled her promise to God. Her sacrifice. We must be content with God's will. But I just feel so sorry for her. Just as she found a little happiness. Mary was taken away from her. She used to tell me how hard it was, how painful not to be near her. I'm so glad she went to visit Mary in the temple. Before taking her last breath near her dear child. Mary. How are we going to tell her?
Hello, Mary. Hello, Grandfather. What are you thinking about, Mary? I was just thinking that it's been six months and seventeen days since I came to the temple. Have you had a hard time here? No, but... Every day I wonder when. When will my mother come and see me? Many days have passed and many nights have gone, but she still hasn't come to visit. My heart is aching. I feel a strange sense. A sense of grief. Is it possible for a mother to forget her very own child, Grandfather? No, it's not. Then why doesn't my mother come and see me? Why are you crying, Grandfather? What's wrong? I was just thinking of my own mother, whom I loved very much, Mary. Did she leave you alone as well? One day, I went to the forest to collect some firewood. When I suddenly felt a deep sense of grief. It seemed to crush my chest just the same way you feel now. I, too, sensed an indescribable feeling. When I returned, I saw that a group of people had gathered. In front of my home, I... I passed the people and went inside. My mother was lying in her bed. Her eyes were closed, and she looked exactly as if she were sleeping. She never seemed to be more at peace. It was as though all the pain and suffering of the world had left her. I put my arms around her neck, and I kissed her, but she didn't wake up. Are you trying to tell me something, Grandfather? Mm. Is it about my mother? Is it that my mother is... <laughs> now I know why she hasn't come to see me here.
have lost my mother. I trust that you will bless her and look after her now that she is with you. Please don't abandon me in my loneliness, as I am deeply grieved and heartbroken. We keep wasting our time trying to teach you scoundrels a lesson. Look at this. You fill these jugs to the brim, and when they break, you say they were too heavy. I was only going to fill it halfway. Don't talk back to me. Who are you taking this water for? I'm taking it for Uncle Joseph. Joseph? Tell him to come get his own water. Now get out of here. Uncle Joseph, Uncle Joseph! What's Guys wrong? Guys over there are picking on us. All right. Hello, my dear colleagues. Hello, Joseph. You can go, child. I'll get the water myself. My dear brothers, these young servants are weak and defenseless. They came here to learn about kindness from their elders. It's a temple's tradition, Joseph. All of us were taught this way as well. Don't forget your childhood hardships. But remember, only you can put an end to these immoral traditions. Don't forget the teachings of the Holy Book, which says, you shouldn't hurt others. I do not believe you would be saying these things if you were aware of the temple's expenditures. I'm sorry, but we've already renewed the contracts of the money changes in the market. And you know that all the strangers and outsiders who visit Jerusalem all come to you to change their money into shekels. And you receive three coins in interest for the exchange. One of which always ends up in your pockets. It's not worthwhile for us. Besides, most of the money that the people and worshippers offer the temple ends up in your hands, doesn't it? Herod's soldiers have come and told us that they've raised the taxes. Raise the taxes now of all times? I mean, can you believe it? The money changes don't have that much money. Listen to what you're saying. Herod receives taxes from us as well. So just pay to Herod the taxes he's owed. We're going to have to increase the interest on loans. And your share of the deal will continue to be one coin. Have you gone mad? It would be cruelty to increase the interest rates. And it would cause chaos. The people have enough problems without having to deal with this. They're already tolerating severe hardships and are complaining of poverty. They would rebel. Since when? Since when have you ever worried about rebellion from the people? If we don't care about the people's needs, then no one is going to care about them. What's happening to Issachar? I didn't mean to upset you. Please, forgive me, Issachar. It's nothing to do with you. Oh. He's been suffering from this ailment for many years now. I'm sorry, but this pain has sapped all my strength. They say that Mary, daughter of Imran, has divine gifts. Why don't you go see her? Anyone she ever prays for is usually healed. If Mary had that ability, she'd heal the pain in her own foot and wouldn't limp. Now, wouldn't she? 
You know the pain in Mary's foot is because she spends so much time worshipping and standing during her prayers. Come look at this. I've traveled all this way. She Mary, have long to live. Thank you, Mary. Please, Mary, you're the only one. Please. No, move away from here. Please help yes, us. Yes, yes. You're not allowed in. Get out. Get out of there. Oh, hey, you're not allowed to be here. Please. You heard him. Move Come on. Back. Okay. Go away. Move no, back. No, you, you don't move understand. back. You're not allowed you to be here. No entry now. I need Mary to This is a temple. Get out of there. Come on. Sacred That's enough. That's enough. Let's go. Woman, leave. Please, I need to. Move. Come on. To tell the truth, most of the pilgrims who come to visit the temple are coming to see her. You've publicized her without even realizing it. These people and their ridiculous superstitions. The people have always been superstitious. This is only their new game, that's all. One day they'll all tire of playing it. They'll tire of their belief in Mary. This holy book is the book of life. We are like wanderers who are lost in the darkness of the night, in a desert where a flash of lightning will show us the way, but only for a brief moment. But the holy book and the prophet light the way for us. They help us to see and to understand. So rise up and support your prophet Zachariah, he who will lead you through the black night and show you the path and keep the fires of hell at bay. Oh, people! The sound of the poor can be heard from afar, crying for freedom from oppression and rest from their daily toils. The Christ will come and abolish these money-loving hypocrites who would keep them in bondage. He will loose their bindings. The doors of paradise are open to those who feed the poor and pave the way for Christ's appearance. And in a revelation to David, God told him, Give good news to the sinners, and frighten those ones who are now righteous. David asked, Why is it I shall give good news to the sinners and frighten those who are righteous? God replied, Tell the sinners that I will accept their repentance and forgive them for their sins, and warn those who are righteous not to be too complacent with their deeds because complacency leads to a man's destruction. This is good news for the sinner who shall have a second chance to change, and for the righteous. It is a warning to stay mindful. So, my dear friends, be humble in your good deeds, and always lower your heads before God who watches over, because he has created the man you are, and knows the man that you may become. God will not tolerate this aggression, Herod. Which aggression? You go and make plots against my throne? Is that not aggression? I'm not involved in any plot, you know that. Well, of course you say that. I've lived with you for many years. I know you very well, Herod. And right now you've been influenced by rumors and malicious people. People who despise me and want me gone. Then tell me this. If... You really are innocent. Then how do you justify your endless visits to the Jewish extremists? The helpless Jews are, of course, fond of me. Am I betraying the king simply by helping them? That's right, you are! You are betraying the king by trying to manipulate the king's peasants. Tell me, can you see the day when they take orders from you instead of from the rightful king? That would be the biggest betrayal! That's not how it is. I'm only trying to appease your subjects. Am I not the spouse of the king? If I am kind to them, is it not as if you are being kind to them? Don't you want to be admired by your subordinates? You've told me that several times, haven't you? Not in this kingdom's traditions. Don't you remember how your father, King Antigonus, used this method to rule? And when he entered the battle against me, he was afraid and hesitant. He was defeated and humiliated. He was not defeated. Because his name still lives on among the people till this day. He did something most rulers don't have the courage to do. He ruled the people's hearts. You see? I told you about this before, didn't I? I was right. She only wants to avenge her defeated father. And to avenge her forgotten ancestral name. I'm proud to be Miriam. Daughter of Antigonus, the great king of the Jews. Member of Hyrcanus II's family. 
Yes. I realize it's easy to insult the kings of the past, while under the protection of the present emperor. You see, it doesn't require much courage or nobility. Insolence! And defeating my father, with the help of the endless Roman army, is no great feat, and surely nothing to be proud of. Uh -huh. Come, guards! Guards, come here! Take this woman and throw her straight into the dungeon. I will crucify you. I will tell them to skin you alive. I will humiliate you until you fall at my feet and beg forgiveness. Take her away! Arden? But it's Lady Miriam. That's Lady Miriam. Take her away! Herod, beware the day the consequence of this aggression is visited upon you. Ah! Did you see the way she revealed her evil intentions in the end? She's an arrogant woman. But what else can you possibly expect from King Antigonus's daughter? Ah, uh, stop! Your love for this woman never ends, does it, Herod? Didn't you see how she belittled you just now? She belittled me. But she did not confess. She did not confess. This is the same dungeon that was used during the time of my father's rule. I'm sure he never imagined that one day they'd throw his precious daughter in here too. Anyway, this is not Solomon or David's monarchy. And even if an ordinary person like my father was in power, there'd be no way to escape his tyranny. Perhaps I'm paying the price for the cries of the innocent people who have suffered in this dungeon during his reign. Back then, I was only just a young girl. I was carefree and inconsiderate. I had no knowledge of the pain and suffering people were going through. Maybe this is the price for seeing Mary years ago. Fate seems to have turned against me. From the moment I saw her. Be quiet, Miriam. Have patience. This could be your final transition in this life. If only I could see her one more time. Mary. Mary.
Oh, oh, oh.